So I'm in here with Raina. She can trot when loose, but she usually gates or paces. I have poles set up. I want you to see what poles can do. Okay, sometimes they're helpful, sometimes they make things worse. So she was pacing, now she's gating. Too many poles, now she's trotting, okay? So if you got a pacey horse, but it also trots, you can use poles, but you can't use too many of them. You know, you go over one pole when they're pacing. If they're not out of the pace, you go over a second pole. And then get away from the poles, because otherwise, you might make the horse trot or it might start fox trotting. So when they're loose in here, it's fine. This is, I'm just using this so they learn to pick up their feet and uh, do different things, but also with a video so you can see that some poles are helpful and some are not if you do too many of them. And lots of times you're working with other instructors, they don't know gated horses, so they're making you do patterns and stuff, which is all fine, but do that at your slower gait, like your flat walk. When you go to do the rocky gait or the running walk, um, unless the horse is horrible, Pacey, I would stay away from poles and serpentines because all those things separate the horse's legs. So if your horse keeps fox trotting or trotting, that's why. It's because you got too many poles and you're doing too many things to separate their legs. So she's facing a little bit. There she's better. So then if I was riding her, I would have went away from the poles. Or you could have slowed down like she slowed down there, which was fine. And now she's back to trotting. So let's see what she does the other direction. Raina. Hey, she's like, it's hot, gay. Why are we doing this? And uh, if you're looking at my breastplate, I forgot to shorten it up. It was on another horse. So that your breastplate should not hang like that. It should be up above their shoulder. So we're going to fix that. So she's pacing. She's going downhill. There she, she gated and then she went into a trot, right? So with her, uh, and you know, you can practice this with your horse too, if you have them in the round pen to see what they do. With her, it only takes one or two pulls and she's back into her gait, but more than one or two pulls and then she starts to trot. So there she went through it pretty well because there she didn't get trotty. If they're shaking their head up and down, they're either doing a flat walk or a fox trot. With the Rockies, they shouldn't really shake their head up and down when you're doing their rocky gait. And of course, any of them can trip when they're not paying attention, right? And she's not a trippy horse, but they can all trip. So hopefully, Raina has helped some of you learn about poles are good, but poles can also be bad if you have too many of them or you put them in the wrong spots, okay? If your horse keeps getting trotty and you put it on an uphill, that's definitely gonna make your horse more on the trotty side. If your horse keeps getting pacey and you put it on the downside, well, that will help a lot because when they go downhill, it makes them pacey. The poles will put them a little bit more towards the trotty side and then not going too fast while you're working on it. Now I took every other pole away. Now she's trotting, but again, we're going uphill. Going uphill makes the horse trotty. Using poles make the horse trotty. So let's speed her up just a little. So she's just flat walking. Now she's trotting. Okay. So you saw what the poles did uphill, which is three of them. Raina. Let's go the other way. So again, going downhill, the poles should be more helpful because that's where she gets a little pacey. So she's pacing. Pull. Better gait. Better gait. Very nice. Okay. So see, the poles helped her in this direction. Doesn't mean she's not going to fall into a trot at all, but they seem to help her more. So you're thinking when you're working, if you see what they're doing naturally, when you're going uphill, you might not want to go over the poles or not too many. Okay. And when you're looking at these Rockies, you know, their head will go a little bit side to side with the gate. It might shake a tiny bit up and down, but not very much, okay? She's in her gate right now. She's still good. Okay, now she went to try. All right, 
I think you get the idea. Okay, so now we got her sidling up to the mounting block. Did it with some food first and then she got a little cuckoo crazy. <laughs> she liked the cookies too much, so we took them away. Okay. So you always be prepared when you do this stuff. If you don't have your stick or whatever you taught them to do it with, they will know and they will test you. Good girl. Okay. Actually, let's make her come a little bit closer. Nothing like perfection. Good girl. Okay. Now you might be like, oh, she did it well. I want to give her a cookie. No. Ones that get crazy for cookies, you can't give too many. Okay. So Raina was one of the jumpy horses that couldn't move around, couldn't move my arms. Her and Tennyson have some similarities with some differences. So you'll see what I'm doing. I'm kind of doing my uh, check before we go. Is like everything working? Are you paying attention? Are you calm? <coughs> Make sure they're good with all those things before you go off. And then as soon as I bring my energy up, you see she kind of goes off. So with her, you have to keep your energy real quiet. And I always take her in circles right away because it helps her to calm down and to relax. And you saw this with Tennyson's video where I just walk around and make circles all around the arena. I do that with her too. And it just helps to give her mind something to do so she can focus on that and not so much on being goey. Okay. So I'll show you more in a little bit. Now we're doing a little serpentine in here. So just weave off the rail and weave back. A lot of these horses that are jumpy, people are like, don't move, don't do this, don't do that. Best to stay in the arena, work on it and get them better with it before you go out on the trail and find out they're way too jumpy. Um, and so you want to be in here and move around and do things and make them do patterns, but then oh, and stop them. Good girl. Move your arms around and get them used to things. So if you don't, then I'm going to move my zipper and then you do these things out on the trail, right? Some of them will get a little freaked out. So she wants to go, we're not ready. So we just stand here, but she did have a good stop for me. Okay, so now we're gonna walk off. Serena doesn't like to stand still. Lots of these horses don't, because nobody ever taught them to. Then they kind of get amped up. I'm gonna weave again to give her mind something to do. We're gonna go over the pole. When you go over the pole, you look up. Don't look down at the pole. That's their job. Just to get you over it. And then practice another stop. Practice lots of stops. People don't do that. So deep breath in. Oh, good girl. And then if they're bad at stopping, I always back up afterwards. Because I want back up on their mind. Good girl. See? She's like, let's go. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Okay, Raina. So you try to stand as long, still as long as you can, and some horses that's not very long, but you keep trying to make it longer and longer, okay? So then I did that flower exercise with her too, where I cut across the arena, and I'm going to the right, so I'm gonna keep turning right and just keep cutting across. And you just make some patterns and give these horses that are anxious, something to busy their mind besides speed and do lots of walking lots of people go the horse is so fast and i go because well, you keep going fast um you know you got to work on slow and ride with slower people and get that horse a little bit lazy if they're always on go okay. remember with this exercise you keep turning the same way but you keep going to different spots in the arena and you're just making it like a little flower now I'm going to stop again. Deep breath in. Whoa, she stopped. Very good. Now I'm going to do a turn on the forehand. Left rein, little left leg. Hold them once they get past the fence because they always want to walk away. Good job. Now see her? She's like, let's move. So let's go to the circles again. So whatever you do one direction, you want to do it the other direction to make your horse even. If they have a bad direction, I usually go that way first. 
go with these circles and I have those poles, I just go right over the pole and I make a circle. And I'm using the poles for her because she got a little pacey with the owner. And so she's coming for a lesson tomorrow. So I want to use some of the poles and I want to make sure Raina has an idea what to do and that she's not nervous or anything with them. So if you have an instructor, trainer, and a jumpy horse, it's always nice if they do it with the horse first. That's their job to prepare it to make it safe for you. Sometimes people don't know that. So they try to do everything gradually, checking things out. So that way I know tomorrow if I make her circle over the poles, right now I know what to do. Okay, then I'm just going to do the um, weaving on and off, so the serpentine, and then I'll practice the woe in this direction. So now I'm going to ask her to just do a fast walk, so a flat walk, and I'm using the poles because we're going downhill. She gets a little pacey, so it'll help. And I'm going to do this for at least five minutes. She got really slow there. So I want a forward walk, something with some energy, but not all the way up into her rocky gait. And, uh, you know, some people don't like the flat walk. They go right past that, and they just do the rocky gait. And, you know, they have a slower rocky gait and a faster one. That's fine, too. You can do whatever you want. I just like all the horses that have this flat walk, because then it gets along the speed with the other gated horses. You know, some of these... Uh, Rockies, you know, they they walk really, really slow, and then they go too fast. So, it's to stay with the other gated horses. So I'm always trying to make them all the same speed, so you can ride with each other. Okay. So I'm going to do this flat walk. So I get her to walk again uh, for the next five minutes to get her into the rhythm of it and get her practicing separating her legs. Because again, she got a little pacey with the owner, so I'm trying to fix her gait again. So as I'm riding her around and I'm doing this flat walk, I keep trying to move around because I want her used to it because she was so jumpy. So you'll see my arms move around. And what I did, which of course the camera was off, as I patted my leg like this, and Raina had a heart attack because she probably thought I was going to hit her, right? And she went to sleep doing her flat walk, and then she's like, oh my god. Whoever, you know, scared her in the beginning, she flashed back to that, and that's what she thought she was doing. So she jumped forward, I just pulled back, and then I kept doing it because I wanted her to get over it. So, you know, stuff's going to happen. But I keep trying to desensitize her as much as we can so she gets better with all this stuff. And she is much better. But sometimes people, you know, you're working on your gait. Well, if they're holding the gait pretty good, you can do other things, you know, and move around. Just keep that rein short, keep sitting back, keep your feet out in front of you a little bit in case they do take off. So you're able to pull back, especially for women, because we're, you know, weaker. She's like, get me out of here. <laughs> and never stop at the gate. Because they always, that's where they want to get out. So even when I get off, I never do it by the gate. So... You just keep moving around. So see, now she's not jumping anymore. I can hit my leg and she's okay. But if you sneak around these ones, they're scared. They just get more scared. So you want to keep showing them like, hey, it's okay. We do this stuff, nothing happens. The other thing we're practicing, you know, I practice the stop at a, a slow walk as they get better. And you know, you got you're like, I got a pretty good stop on them now. You want to practice it at all your different speeds. Hey, the Western people, people with the quarter horses, they have the best stops on their horses because they practice this stuff and they train their horses. A lot of these gated horses are not trained well. So you want to practice your stops. You're just walking around doing your flat walk and you're like, oh, I, I think I'll stop. Well, they don't stop well or you have to pull on the reins and back them up, put backwards on their mind. Good girl, yeah, good job. And then walk off again. And just at different random times, stop them so they get used to that. When you fall on the reins, they're supposed to come back. But if you don't ever practice it, then it doesn't work out well. Okay. Well, you can try it in between the poles. Oh, good girl.
then she tried to turn so I'm just backing her up. <laughs> 